All right, guys. Welcome to the sequel LP to Pokemon Pinball. Is it Pokemon Pinball again? No, it's not. Because there's a Torchic and a Pichu and a Trico and a Plus of and a Mudkip and Jinjao that are getting backed about. And Makuhita and a Spoink and a Pelipper and a Wilmer. Now Wilmer just vomited up a Pokeball. A very poorly polygonal Pokeball. Because we're playing Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire, as was promised at the end of the last Let's Play. So we're going to go to options first thing, of course, and set up our controls properly, and so, so I can show off what it is. Now, unfortunately, the rumble is off because this is an emulator, and uh, unfortunately, we can't link them up. So let's see where our controls are. Left flipper is the left button, right flipper is A, tilt left L, right tilt R, and a tilt up is L and R. I think that's a perfectly fine and reasonable set of controls. You can check out type set B, decent. Type set C, not bad either. L and R are the flippers. And typeset D is uh, that, which is um, not so bad either. And you can edit them as well, have your own custom set. But I think for us, type A is fine. If it's not fine, I'll uh, obviously change those mid-game. So let's go back, check out the high scores, see who we're going to beat. Oh, I actually have scores on this. I had no idea. All right, so uh, apparently I already have some scores on this. I forgot I played this game already. So here are the board scores for the Ruby and the Sapphire boards. And uh, let's go back and we will just get straight into it. Game starts. Obviously we'll start with the Ruby field. And ball speed normal or slow? We can handle normal because we're bosses. But uh, if you are struggling with this game, by all means, select um, the slow version. So we're starting in the forest. What forest is it? Uh, probably Petalburg Woods, if I had to guess. There's no name associated with it. At least it doesn't say anything right now. So you can see we've got the, uh, instead of cave, we've got hole with those lights at the bottom. Everything is uh, isometric now. They have this nice 3D effect. And uh, on this board, instead of having diglets or um, or whatever the hell they were, per blah, 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 polywags and um, Psyduck, we've got a Linoon on both sides. All right, what Pokemon do we have for our very first on the Ruby board? It looks like an evolved Pokemon. That can't be Silcoon or Cascoon. Oh yeah, I think it is, you know. There are some, if if it's not fully evolved, you can actually catch it. Um, and as you can tell there, uh, we had the... Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. But the Sharpedo is the equivalent of the Bellsprout in the red field. But yeah, it does look like it's a Cascoon. I think it's the Cascoon, it's the purple one anyway. But you'll also notice that we did, it didn't actually take six hits to reveal all of the tiles. It took um, three hits. And because we did it all in quick succession, we got an extra bonus thing where the Chinchou immediately shattered the uh, tiles. Yeah, it's Cascoon. And that is evolved form of Wormpool, which uh, itself, Cascoon evolves into Dust Tox. So on the right side, as usual, this is how we catch Pokemon. We need to get two arrows at least. And now the thing is, with the Lionune, because I hit it, you can see how Makuhita's has changed now. And he punches whenever I press the right flipper. So he can punch the ball to get into that mark. Or, or to get into the um, the yellow to the yellow path. The bumper as well is that little yellow thing. And if you want to buy items, um, there's actually coins that you can spend. You can earn them and uh, pay for stuff when you go to the mark. Left side, of course, is uh, evolving. And we get our first tile a first slot i should say which is 30 second ball saver so in this the ball saver is represented by latios and as you can probably guess on the other field it'll be represented by corresponding pokemon latias i think at least i hope that's the case and hope i didn't just lie to everyone but i don't want to hit the line noon right now because uh, if i do then i'll lose the makuhita punching bonus Oh, right now. Ah! I messed it up. There's a Nuzleaf up there who's guarding the uh, ball upgrade. So you want to get Makuhita to punch the ball into the Nuzleaf to, ev to evolve your ball. Now, the other thing about this, as well as catching Pokemon, you've got baby Pokemon from the eggs. And they'll wander around the field. And uh, they will be caught by smacking it twice instead of three times. Nice. Pikachu's got a good Thundershock. Really that just need one more hit nice very slow it's a po it's a little baby don't want to smack it too hard do you 
There we go. It's in the middle. So catching a Pokemon as usual is worth one ball. Um, catching a baby Pokemon is also worth one ball. And I still believe catching, um, evolving a Pokemon is worth two. All right, so we've got ourselves a second cave. All right, let's see if we can get a catch in mode. Prime things off nicely. Ah, 30 second ball saver. Let's complain about, I guess. Now, I completely forgot what our tilt button was. B. Don't remember. Oh, wait, no, it was uh, L and R, wasn't it? In our case. Yeah, got a left tilt and a right tilt. So, once you caught Pokemon, Aerodactyl will replace the egg. And you just need to hit the Cyndaquil a couple of times because it's guarding the entrance. Now, I'm wondering why they put a Cynd I guess it makes sense, sort of, that it's a fire Pokemon. And Chinchou got a big hit there. Um, but you'd want a Pokemon with a flame body, I'd, I'd say, like a Slugma or Makargo guarding it. But uh, then again, the starters haven't been really... They've been neglected, I'd, I'd say. There we go. We punched the Pokemon. So that other left path, you can see it's got 1, 5, and 10 lit up. So when you pass the ball through that channel, you'll get coins. So I've punched the Nuzleaf two times. So now he's created the bridge. Which means that if we manage to get it another time, we will um, be able to upgrade our ball. But there is a timer on that. Nuzleaf will recover. 30 coins. Decent. We can buy some good stuff. Catch the ball in that. Oh, okay, it's one Chin Chow. Oh yeah, when you hit the bonus multiplier, it changes the amount of Chin Chow and their rotation pattern. Alright, we've upgraded to a great ball. There we go. So successive hits onto the bonus multiplier will change the amount of Chin Chow. And uh, there is a nice little bonus if you can hit it enough, a, a number of times. Ah. Pikachu, Pikachu! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! I, got, I had to remember that LNR was up tilt. God oh, damn it, Pikachu. <laughs> you got a ball out then. But we even got to see one bonus stage. There we go. Hit the Chin Chow. Hit the Chin Chow again. He's ready to accept. Oh, we don't want the Sharpedo just yet. We're either going for a catch or a hatch. Oof, that was a close one. Ah, Nuzleaf has recovered. That. Damn it, you, you got stuck in a rut again. Red Bud usually has stuff like that. Okay, so the gra you can see the gravity of... Uh, really? Really? God oh, damn it. I guess it's going to be one of those episodes when nothing happens. Alright, let's catch it. Boom. Go. We're inside the Mart. So you can see here, we've got a, stuff, a bunch of stuff to buy. 30 seconds worth 10 coins, 60 seconds 20, 90 seconds worth 30, you can upgrade for 40. A 30 second timer bonus, this is for catching and evolving games, you get 30 seconds extra. Pikachu is worth 50, I would I would buy it but I don't have enough coins. Uh, a bonus challenge which is uh, part of the Chin Chow, you can get that. An extra ball is worth 99 coins. So we're not going to buy anything, we're going to hold it to our coins. If we can get 10 more coins, we'll buy the Pikachu if it doesn't give it to us already in the slots. So I really like that about this game. Which is the... Um, which is the fact you can buy stuff. You can choose how to upgrade. Good thing we had a ball saver on there. That's just helping us out. We haven't charged up enough yet though. Yep. Oh yeah, I mistook the, uh, what I said earlier. It's not the bonus multiplier, it's the other thing on the left. Between the hatch and the Chin Chow, that uh, gives you the bonus games. Or, or changes the amount of Chin Chow. Where not to? Alright. Uh, okay. So if you hit the ball in there while the baby Pokemon is flying around, it will not replace the egg. So I don't know why I keep hitting it in there. Go, one hit. Nice. Nice assist there, Chikorita. This should get us to our bonus stage. Yep. Our first bonus stage is 
the Kecleon minigame. So in this minigame, Kecleon will wander around this little safari park, or safari zone, and he'll go invisible, and you have to hit him. Figure out where he is. So we've got some clues. We've got a scope there. X-ray scope. We'll reveal his location, and we can smack him a couple of times. Now he knows when we can see him. We gotta knock him down, and when he's prone, hit him another time. Yo, you can also hit him even if you don't have the scope. You can get a lucky hit. Yo. Might be able to see some clues about where he is. Should be in the top left somewhere. There he is. Ah! One hit. Two. The scubs fall out the tree, if you haven't guessed by now. Ah! It is quite lenient with the time. And uh, there's no ball release like there was um, in, po in the Pokemon Pinball Red and Blue. It just um, rematerializes, so you don't have to worry about um, time wasting. At least not to that degree. So, you can see there's plenty of time to knock out Kecleon. And he's waving the white flag of surrender. That gives us 30 million points right off the bat. Kind of hard to fail that one. Although it, ha it has been known to happen. Right, got the evolve channel. Let's get the slots ready to catch as well. I wouldn't mind either. I guess we could evolve, um, catch first, and then we'll have more chances to evolve Hit immediately. What the hell is that? I don't right. Oh, it's a trico. Yeah, I think it's a trico. Looks like gecko, gecko like. All right, now I hit that bumper. I mean, it's only one Chin Chow now. It's going to be a lot harder to uh, to get the reveal. Ah, nuts. Now, the music in this game, some variation of um, the Ruby and Sapphire theme. I don't exactly know what they're copying. I mean, you can you can tell by the instruments it sounds similar. I just don't know what theme they're copying. Ah, yeah. With, when You know when the hole is lit up? There's no, like, second lit lighting up. It just stays lit until you can get it in the hole. Nuts, this is hard. Yeah, patterns in this aren't as easy to find. Not like in red and blue. Damn it. Ball's going everywhere. Don't want to hit that. We don't have a saver either. Oof. So you can see there. Oh shoot! Oof. There we go. Oh. Sure. Oh, goodness gracious me. Oh, I thought I had that. Messed it up. Come on, we got to get to the bonus stage at least. It's going to be such a short episode, a short LP, I should say. I might have to restart it. Ah, nuts. A one Chin Chan, man, pissing me off. The line noon. You know, I've been hitting the line noon all day. When I need to hit it, or want to hit it, it just doesn't want to know. Damn it. Great, got another catch. Another baby Pokemon. A Shroomish. There was a whole lot of nothing happening there, so I might edit that out. One. Easy. Nope. Gotcha. And that's two. We 
got you there, didn't we? Alright, let's see if the cave slot can't help us out. Evo mode? Or well, 30 second plus? Bloody savers. To be fair, they have been saving me. No one cares. No one cares about the hatch. Come on. I want to see an evolve. I want to get an evolve at the end of the episode. Right, let's cradle the ball. Can't launch it up there. Nope, don't want to know. Fucking hell. That's so stupid. Look at how it's angled. It's angled to go into the hole to make you lose. There we go. Time to evolve. Evo mode. We're going to evolve. Do I have the evolution already? I like this. You can actually check if you've got the evolved form. So we don't have a dust tox. We don't have the um, wall rain or whatever it's called. Don't have Zatu. Don't have Breloom. So... Let's start things off with Cascoon. We'll get a Dust Ox. So to evolve this Pokemon, all you need is experience. See, it's right there. And as we've seen already, we can hit um, Cyndaquil, no problem. That's one of the easiest things to hit. That one's in the middle. And we've gone everywhere except to that place. Strange. There we go. We jump through Helton this out there. We've got the last one. That's obviously the same place you can, um, just like in the last game, you can have the three lights and uh, upgrade your wall. Now we evolve and we get Dustox. So it should be worth two if I'm not mistaken. And now we have the Groudon stage. Let's uh, go take on Groudon. Got some scary music. Once that's in there. Doesn't want to let us in. Weird. I was gonna say if it didn't let us in. Alright. So what should we do here? We're at 18 minutes. Which means we're gonna end the episode here. And next episode, we will take on Groudon. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next episode. Take care.